I was working on episode two and it just seemed like a nuclear reactor is just blown up. I don't really think there's any time to just relax. There has to be a sense of, of great urgency. And so episodes two and three kind of squished together into one. Mm. And as I often point out, that's when I found out that I get paid by the episodes. So it's a little distressing. Yes. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. I asked HBO. It was very sweet. I was like, is it okay if I make it five instead of six? And they were like, yeah. Without further ado, my goodness, the Chernobyl team is here in full effect. Uh, I'm so glad we can welcome the writer, Craig Mazin. Hi. Hello. We have the director, Johan Renk. Hello, Johan. We have actor Jared Harris. Welcome, Jared. And last but not least, the executive producer, Jane Featherstone. So thank you all for joining us uh, remotely, obviously. You're all safe in your offices and homes. Uh, but really great that you could join us today to talk a bit more about this remarkable project. Um, of course, I have to start with Craig. All we right. always have to. That's where this show started. We have to start with you. Um, I, you know, I've read that you started researching it, the, this disaster again, sort of in, in 2014. And why was it that you thought this would make a compelling story for now or for 2014 now? Sure. Um, yeah, the world changed uh, quite rapidly between 2014 and the time we were in production, much less the time that the show came out. But there is a certain universal basis for my interest, and that essentially was a fascination with our inability as humans to wrestle with the truth. We just really struggle with it. And the story of Chernobyl was, on the one hand, um, um, about that failure of humans. But on the other hand, there was also this incredible celebration of humans, that people did things in the wake of Chernobyl that I just hadn't considered or heard of. We know about stories of heroism from war because the stories of war are told over and over and over. Mostly the stories of war that we hear are stories from the perspective of the West, whether it's the Americans or the British. Um, but here was a war that we didn't even know happened. And it happened in the nation that we considered our enemy. And it happened with people that we considered to be um, foreign to us. And it turns out they were not foreign to us. And the citizens themselves were not our enemy and the heroism that they showed, sorry, that they showed not just rivals, but I think exceeds so much of what we have seen on screen from, you know, our representations of history. So it was this interesting combination of the worst of things and the best of things, the worst of humanity and the best of humanity. And that's what drew me in. And then, uh, unfortunately, the world insists on making Chernobyl relevant. <laughs> it's it's very upsetting. I I don't like it. I want it to stop happening. I remember, you know, after we put the show out, obviously there was this um, sense that the there was a global war on the truth, and then also we are living inside of this time of climate change and denial, and now we're in a time of COVID and denial. And uh, these things keep happening. So um, I'm, I'm distressed. Honestly, you wanna be relevant as an artist, but I don't wanna be this relevant, this is upsetting. No, and I think we'll, it'll be nice, not nice, but it'll be relevant to come back and talk about sort of the reflections on the show now a bit later. Oh, we've already got some good questions coming in and I, I'm gonna try to jump to these as I had, some of them are you know right aligned with what I wanted to ask you. And there's already a question coming in um, from William Turner about, um, did you ever think about making it as a feature film? Did you feel like you had more freedom in doing it as a TV show? So Craig, you know, back when you started thinking this is an important story to tell, did you, did you know it would be episodic? Oh yeah, no, there's no other way to do it. I, I got lucky again in that around 2015, 2014, 2015, the United States started adapting, um, uh, adopting, I should say, rather the the system that has been employed in the UK for many years. I mean, Jane knows because she's you know she's done so much television there that the there is this beauty in in the flexibility of the British format. Your season can be six episodes; it could be eight episodes. Yeah. In the US, we've always had this network machine of twenty two episodes, which is nearly impossible pace. Or movies, which I've been doing my entire career, but in a movie. Like I always say, I'm panicking by page three that I'm already, I've already taken up too much space. Hmm. 
So Chernobyl needed room. Uh, it needed room because the stories were um, very fragmented and um, prismatic and you needed to be able to tell all of those and you needed to take your time. And when you know you look at the work that Johan did, for instance, you want to you want your director to have time to create mood and feeling. And movies are uh, just a, a fire drill. You're always in a panic because you're always running out of time. Okay. And Jane, when you first heard, when did you come on board, and why did you think it was going to be able to sort of be financed right now? Why was now the right time for the industry to get behind? Uh, I, I got a call, it was uh, 2015, so five years ago, um, from Kerry Antholis, who was at HBO, and I'd made a couple of um, pieces for HBO over the years and had loved working with them. And I'd just set up my new company called Sister and didn't have any work and was literally, it was day one. And I was sitting in the car outside my house and Kerry rang and said, I just had a pitch from this writer, Craig Mason. You won't know, he's done movies and stuff, never done TV, you won't know. Um, but it's this pitch about Chernobyl and I was in Britain when Chernobyl happened and I remember it very very well as a 17 year old and uh, anyway he sent me the treatment and it was the best treatment I had ever read truly it was it was an extraordinary document and I don't know actually many people Craig have asked me if that document's available because I always say it's the best treatment I've ever read and and it when other writers are like how do I do a good treatment and one of the reasons it was so extraordinary I didn't know what was going, you know, I knew Chernobyl, the, the big event, but I didn't know the stories behind it. But the way Craig had written it, the structure, which was then six episodes actually, and you shrunk it to five in the process of development, didn't you? But uh, it was the way it was started. It was a horror film, it was a war movie, it was a character piece. It just had such epic scale. I thought it was staggering. So then we developed it for a bit and had to fight quite hard for the money, I seem to remember Craig. In the end. Well, uh, I remember <laughs> you fighting hard for the money. <laughs> and, and... Yeah, you let me not have to worry about that. It was a great joy. <laughs> I'm still in your debt. Because it wasn't an obvious piece in many ways, and particularly for HBO, where it's a, it's a European story. Of course, it's a global story, but it was coming out of Europe. Um, so, uh, yeah. And it's HBO and Sky together, we should mention. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and then Johan, um, you know, I normally with a product of this scale, episodic, you might split the directing duty with somebody else and you did not. Um, did it ever feel daunting that you personally were going to be able to direct these five incredible episodes? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have it any other way, to be honest. Uh, I, you know, I, I st started out in movies and then went into episodical TV that I then abandoned uh, for the love of limited series actually. And I've been doing that's the only thing I've been doing for the last seven, seven years or eight years or something like that. And, and for me, I, I really love the format. Uh, and I think also the, the beauty of this particular uh, script, or one of many beauties is that it, yes, it's five hours and it's, it sprawls out, but it has the urgency and the trajectory of a movie still, you know, the way it's curated and the way it's written and the way it behaves is so non-television and it felt like, you know, going back to your first question to Craig, it, it felt like a movie and it, and it needs to be done like a movie. I wouldn't want to do half a movie and leave that to some other dude to do the rest of it. So, so for me, any of these ventures is, I want to do A to Z and it is, you know, daunting in the sense of that Chernobyl was like shooting, prepping, shooting, editing, posting three movies on top of each other. We, we cross-boarded the whole thing and shot like a movie, which is the right way to do it. But, but the short answer still to your question is no. It, it is, it's, it's just amazing to be able to do a five hour movie uh, and then that it happens to be distri distributed in, in five episodes is another aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, another good question coming in. Um, I forget, I'm trying to figure out who sent this. Anyway, I've seen it from one person at least. Uh, just how, you know, James already mentioned you at first had six episodes planned and you went down to five. Um, how did the scripts evolve from those first drafts to what we have seen on screen? Well, <clears throat> there is probably less uh, distance between the first drafts of these scripts and the final product than, than pretty much anything else I've ever written, but that's less a comment about 
me and more a comment about how stupid movie development is. <laughs> it's honestly, it's just television development is lovely and movie development is corrosive. And so um, there were, um, but there were important changes. I mean, the, the change of collapsing down really was a response to what Johan's saying that I felt as I was, I was working on episode two and it just seemed like a nuclear reactor is just blown up. I don't really think there's any time to just relax. There has to be a sense of, of great urgency. And so episodes two and three kind of squished together into one. Mm. And as I often point out, that's when I found out that I get paid by the episodes. So it's a little distressing. Yes. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. I asked HBO. It was very sweet. I was like, is it okay if I make it five instead of six? And they were like, yeah. Um, so, well, you know, I mean, it's not that much money. Um, but there were key people involved that helped me continue to push the ball forward. Obviously, Jane and Carolyn Strauss, our other executive producer who's not here, and Johan and HBO and Sky, but also Jared had a huge impact on the script. I mean, we had a number of sessions together and Jared um, has a very, he has a very writerly mind and he was able to look at the script. I mean, this is what you hope for, especially in an actor is somebody who can look at the script and forget for a second that they're in the cast and just look at the story like a writer or a director. And he had some really excellent input that, that had a strong influence on how episode four flowed into episode five and the way that episode five worked because of course so much of episode five is us just shining a light on Jared and, and, and it's, it's, his, it's his episode. So it all had to you know, kind of work properly. And, and so that was, um, that was a huge help for me. 